Okay then, I'm testing the uh, Kwan Yun Sports Streamline pellets. It's a new one I found at the uh, local egg run shop I go to, which is uh, Go Dai. Uh, they're slightly heavier in the weight. Uh, I, think I think the uh, original uh, Diablo shapes are around 8.6, but these are 9.56. Uh, you'll see that after testing the first 100 by weighing them, they weren't the 9.56 that uh, I expected them to be. They came out in a range of weights, but slightly under that, but you'll see that in the results. Uh, I've done my initial uh, range test, and what I thought I'd do today because uh, if any of you watch the, I don't think of the name of the channel now, uh, Wisconsin Air Gunner, uh, an American YouTuber, he actually did a test yesterday using uh, two moderators. I think one was the uh, Donny FL uh, silencer, I should say, and the other, the other one was uh, the latest uh, one that. Puma have made. Now strangely enough, uh, when he tested the two silencers, uh, one in particular, I won't tell you which one it is, you'll have to watch the channel, uh, the actual chronograph results was uh, very erratic uh, and so it pointed to the silencer. Uh, and it even affected the groups. Now we all know those that shoot with silencers that they kind of uh, affect the point of impact compared to not having a silencer on. Uh, so I never never even thought about the effects on chronographing. So what I'm going to do today with uh, a particular pellet which is done well in the in the range test as you'll see is to now chronograph it through the uh, BSA R10 Mark II rat work to my life. I'm going to chronograph it with the uh, ESA VC moderator fitted. Then I'll chronograph it with the muzzle brake that it comes with. And then I'll chronograph it just with nothing on the barrel at all. And we'll see if it makes any difference to the chronograph results. Because nobody really thinks about that when they chronograph a rifle. We know it can affect the point of impact, but does it affect the pellet? And looking at the Wisconsin air gunner, it does. So uh, I will leave a link at the bottom of the uh, video. So when you get on the YouTube page, watch the video, go to the actual link below and you can see for yourself. It's quite interesting, really, and it's something we don't do enough of. So uh, I'll get on with the test. Okay then, a bit time consuming, but I had to put away all the pellets to make sure that I was getting a consistent result with the chronograph. And looking at the weights, apart from the 9.6s, which there was 10 of, most of them were under what they were supposed to be at 9.56 grains. Um, the average was around 9.3, 9.4. Uh, but yeah pretty consistent in some respects uh, but all of the weight specified ok on to the shooting part and as you can see they are all seem to be grouping at the one o'clock position using the silencer. Silencer is working well because you can't even hear the rifle, you can just hear the impact of the pellet at 26 yards. It's made a nice little group there. There's one or two flies probably and there's one of them. 
Okay, next uh, group of ten is with uh, silencer removed, muzzle brake on. And you can see that has changed the point of impact. It's gone high, but in line with the bull. Just hear the echo of the rifle in the background there. Uh, 26 yards, it's not too bad. You always say never hear the, the bullet that kills you, and that's what would happen in real life. This is everything removed from the barrel. No muzzle brake, no silencer. So again, point of impact is high. Pretty accurate still. Nice pellet on pellet again. But silencer, as you can see, makes a difference to the point of impact. Okay, as you can see, uh, the muzzle brake and the nothing on the barrel are pretty similar. Now to the chronography. First shot of 20 pellets was with the silence of third. And as you can see with the results there, on this particular silence, it didn't make much difference. Uh, extreme spread of 11, standard deviation of 3.1, which is what you're really looking at. So not too bad really. Next one was with a muzzle brake. This one only a street spread of 9 feet per second, the standard deviation 2.3. So, if anything, the muzzle brake is the best of the options there. The little holes in the uh, muzzle brake probably work like an air stripper. But, uh, yeah, not bad. Finally, nothing on the barrel at all. Again, this was a extreme spread of 11 and a standard deviation of 3. So, having said that, this particular rifle it doesn't really make much difference. Uh, as you see on the Wisconsin video, uh, the silencer used had a different uh, baffle inside. It's a, one that looks like a, a curler with uh, some felt around it, and that came out with a, a bad result. Baffles on the uh, VC silencer are different, so that could be the difference there. Uh, this shows uh, all three side by side. Uh, so with muzzle brake or nothing on the barrel, it's slightly better on consistency. That's 60 shots fired in all. And here again, it's a total uh, thing all lined up. And that gave us an extreme spread of 50 and standard deviation of just 3.5 again. So that is the end of the particular test. Thanks for watching.